Alright, welcome to the video where I'll be introducing the thematic Yu-Gi-Oh format. As the name suggests, this format intends to keep decks close to a team, so that players may experience complete immersion in their decks, without the intervention of inappropriate generic staples. Which provides a promising base for creating theatrical duels, similar to the duels portrayed in the anime. Keeping cards in their intended environment encourages intuitive deck building, while providing a natural balance to the game. Additionally, their consequent restriction on an abundance of generic staples keeps all cards in the deck centralized around the unique character of the deck. The focus on decks with a character and intuitive deck building are therefore the main characteristics of the format. The meta Yu-Gi-Oh! has been around for a few years already, mainly played by a community in real life, but hasn't really serviced online yet. Until now. Because after having read so many comments on YouTube, Reddit, Discord, where players express their perspective on the state of the advanced format of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! After having seen so many videos where players try out different formats, structure deck duels, draft duels, anime duels and many other sealed environments, which keep proving the necessity of alternative Yu-Gi-Oh! formats, I know many players will be glad to learn about the existence of thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! Interests in a thematic format emerged from a small community having played the TCG for over a decade. They noticed that the advanced format grew less and less to their liking. Most of the disliked aspects of the advanced format can be traced back to the omnipresence of generic staples. Now many card games may have to deal with generic staples if they have generic cards, cards which maintain their full functionality regardless of in which deck they are played, because if these generic cards have strong enough effects they will be replacing cards which would only work in a specific environment. And since it is then straightforward for every player to see that these generic staples are simply the best cards to include in your deck, decks will become nearly identical. This is known as a Nash equilibrium in game theory. An abundance of generic staples leads to equalization of decks and to a stale card game format. And many card games have straightforward solutions for this, such as a rotating card pool, an environment related mana system, or providing a variety of official formats to play in. But Yu-Gi-Oh! has none of these, and instead aims to provide a fix via only a selective forbidden and limited list, which tries to but can't hope to cover all of the different generic staples designed by Konami. Because after all, in what percentage of decks does a generic staple have to see play before it's considered ban worthy? And what about the cards which lie slightly below that percentage? In addition to that, a forbidden and limited list only has the options to either allow a card in all decks or ban a card for all decks. So cards which may have been intended to excel in a particular environment but turned out to be generically abusable are forbidden for all decks, even for the decks that they were intended to be played in. There are many examples of situations created by the omnipresent generic staples in Yu-Gi-Oh! which led to the demotivation of playing in the advanced format. First of all, you're forced to play these generic staples. See, duels are played to win and in order to do so you want to construct the strongest deck that you can. You would think that you are now able to choose from all the more than 10,000 Yu-Gi-Oh! cards out there to strengthen your deck, but you couldn't be further from the truth. Since you don't have to put an effort to look for cards which would work well specifically with your deck, you can just include cards that would work well generically, in any deck. And since there exists a pool of generic cards that also happen to be the strongest cards that you can include, it's no longer a choice. You must include cards from this pool of generic staples. This is the false freedom of choice. Even if you don't have many open spots left in your deck, you're best off freeing up space for these generic staples. The more the merrier, as many event topping decks already showed. And especially if you're a fan of a generally weaker team, you're literally best off replacing most of your thematic cards by generic staples. It will increase your odds at winning. The second point is the predictable place. Since all decks are forced to play the same generic staples, it becomes incredibly easy to recognize the moves that your opponent is able to and is going to make. Even new players, given invested enough, will familiarize themselves with the main generic staples in no time, since these cards are played in nearly every deck that they match up against anyway. Every deck making a lot of the same moves as other decks makes for mostly monotonous and repetitive experiences during duels. And even if you manage to clutch a win with one of these generic staples, it does not at all feel like an original or unique play. It does not at all feel special to deal the finishing blow with Access Code Talker or negating your opponent's every move with Appaloosa. For players who sought after more unique plays and satisfying wins, the advanced format did not provide. Another point is the long combo heavy turns which are mainly stimulated by the combination of excessive special summoning monsters and generic extra deck monsters. Since the combination of them provides the most consistent and strongest place, it is often the best way to build your advanced format deck. And to reinforce the previous point, these long combo heavy turns generally have the same outline for every deck. The first turn ending with a lineup of familiar boss monsters, full of negates, interruptions or hard to out boss monsters, or even entirely locking the opponent out of playing the game. While the second turn player uses their generic staples to interrupt the opponent and break the board. 
The same recipe with the same ingredients every time. And last but not least, the financial costs to compete. The majority of the current thematic community plays in real life. So another significant issue was the advanced format becoming more and more expensive if you want to have a shot at winning your locals. The fact that in order to compete, you're forced to include expensive generic staples does wonders for Konami's wallet, but has demotivated many Yu-Gi-Oh players from advancing competitively. Instead of an abundance of generic staples, a commonly better enjoyed game format is created by the opposite of generic cards. Cards that excel in a particular environment. Cards that are not completely functional outside of their environment, but are best at what they do within it. This encourages playing specific cards only in specific decks, and generally leads to a refreshing feeling of every single card each time you match up against a different deck. That is why thematic Yu-Gi-Oh arose, in an attempt to create refreshing duels and focus on decks with unique cards and plays. By using the simple concept, keep cards in their intended environment. Now, Unfortunately, we can't go back in time and alter already printed cards so that they are kept in their intended environment, but we can devise a pretty straightforward rule set to achieve more or less the same thing. Loads of online duels have been hosted in rooms where thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! or thematic duels was written in the room description, and players who had never even heard of the format joined with decks which were almost, if not completely, conformed the thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! rule set. If you, the viewer of this video, have experience with playing Yu-Gi-Oh, then you may already have a good idea of what a thematic deck would look like. That is one of the strongest aspects of the format. The rule set is shaped around what would intuitively be a thematic deck. This makes it fairly straightforward for any player to start constructing a thematic deck, and then the thematic rulebook should only have to be consulted when in doubt. The thematic Yu-Gi-Oh rule set flows from the basic concept of keeping cards in their intended environment, which unsurprisingly leads to intuitive deck building. The most intuitive way of building a deck is starting from scratch. So let's start. The first step is to pick any card that we like to start building the deck with. Let's say we're picking Blue Eyes White Dragon. Then we can successively add any main deck cards that synergize with a card in our deck. So besides the obvious archetypal cards, we can synergize with any specific enough card trait. Think of monster types, monster levels, monster attributes, spell trap card types. Creativity is encouraged. But this way, thematic decks cannot include just any generic staple, unless they synergize with it. If we chose to include an archetypal card in our deck, then we must include a minimum number of cards from that archetype. That is to avoid splashing of archetypal cards. We must include at least 10 main deck cards of that archetype, among which at least 5 different cards, which is regarded to as applying the 10-5 rule. In our example this condition is easily fulfilled by including 3 Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3 Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, 2 Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, 2 Dictator of D, and 2 Ultimate Fusion. And we will likely add many more archetypal cards to our deck. And other pure thematic decks, in other words single archetype decks, generally tend to include even more cards of their archetype than the pure Blue Eyes White Dragon deck does. So, we can see that unless a deck includes multiple not overlapping archetypes, applying the 10-5 rule happens pretty much automatically. Lastly, we can add any extra deck cards which are part of an archetype that is in the deck. So, in our example we can include any extra deck card which is part of the Blue Eyes White Dragon archetype. And that right there is all we need to know to start building a thematic deck to play thematic duels with. For new or returning players who are still finding their way in the TCG's advanced format, thematic Yu-Gi-Oh might be especially interesting, as the thematic format can be seen at the very least as a bridge, a more newcomer friendly learning environment to perhaps eventually take them to the advanced format. And if so, most thematic decks can easily be turned into an advanced format deck by adding generic main and extra deck staples. Experienced players may see thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! as a challenge to design strong decks while keeping cards in their own environment. Or it may just provide a more relaxed way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! to enjoy alongside the intricate and fast-paced advanced format. For any player who would like to know more details about the thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! format, feel free to join the Discord, link in the description, where you can find the thematic rulebook and all the info you may need on the thematic Yu-Gi-Oh! format. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the Discord or here in the comments, I aim to respond to all questions. Also, I plan to make a follow-up video where I can go more in depth on the concept and the rule set. I will link that video in the description as soon as it's online. But remember, the thematic rule set tends to follow what intuitively would be a thematic deck. So players can start right away with building a thematic deck around their favorite team. And it is likely that the deck will naturally conform to the rule set. That follow-up video and the thematic rulebook are only to be consulted when in doubt. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to be playing some thematic duels with you soon. We shout.